Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you. Welcome back to the channel and welcome today to one of my favourite places. I'm in the supercar paddock at the Goodwood Festival of Speed where we are surrounded by an encyclopedia of the world's latest and greatest. From the newest hypercars to track focus specials to even some brand new releases right here. Let's go for a walk around of what could quite literally be the world's most expensive car park. <laughs> It is proving to be incredibly busy here today. Unsurprising really when you consider that we have the likes of Pagani, Koenigsegg, Lamborghini, Ferrari, McLaren, Aston Martin, you name it, all of the latest cars are here on show. Now those of you who are regular followers might remember that in previous years I've had a tendency to unveil something new that I've got on order. And I think that's the noise of the Pagani Huayra Roadster revving away in the background. Maybe we'll hear some more noises as we go around. But what I was going to say is that two years ago I put in my order and announced it here for the AMG GTR. Last year I announced the 911 GT3 and loads of you have been asking me what it's going to be this year but as you know there are two cars in the paddock that I've cheated and kind of already announced. One is the car tucked in behind that crowd behind me, the new McLaren Senna. The other is the Ford GT. So let's get started then and take a proper look around. You'll have to excuse me if my voice goes. It's been a long weekend filming an awful lot more videos that are going to be coming soon on the channel. But let's try and weave our way straight through here to get started with the McLaren Senna, the latest member of the Ultimate Series, the car that is built and devoted entirely for the racetrack, 800 horsepower, 800 kilos of downforce, and well, soon you're going to see an awful lot more of one on the channel. To continue past, we get to McLaren Super Series with the 720S, car with the doors open looking wonderful. Uh, we've seen a fair bit of the 720S in recent times, awesome car to drive, but then we get to their new LT, the new long tail, the Sports Series member, the 570S grown up, the 600 LT, and this car actually also has the seats, the carbon fiber seats from the new McLaren Senna, significant work in terms of aero, fixed wing at the back, new exhaust on the rear deck lid, we'll take a better look at it in due course, but much more aggressive aerodynamics and design going on with the new 600 LT, looks awesome, chicane grey, continuing past, we have the 570S Spider, and then we have a red 570 GT. So I'm going to come back through towards another McLaren product, actually. If we just come this way from Lanzante, this is the McLaren P1 GT. This is basically take a P1 GTR and extend it. This is a tribute to the long tail, the old McLaren F1 uh, GT. And well, look at it. Four exhaust going on down there, how low it is, extended rear. It looks like a savage weapon for the racetrack. Incredible, incredible thing. Nice tribute in the paint scheme, color scheme of the uh, old car. So let's come around this side where we've got the Aston Martins and the Ferraris. Lots and lots more to see going on down here. This is the brand new Aston Martin DBS Superleggera. I think it looks incredible, it sounds incredible. Beautiful in this paint colour in the dark red. Beyond that, we've got the DB11 Volante, DB11, DB11 AMR beyond that. On this side, to take in some Ferraris, we've got the XX program cars. So we have the Ferrari FXX, 599XX from uh, Tempesta Racing, and on this side, the FXXK Evo, the uh, limited final version now of the FXXK, uh, which I rode in once up the Goodwood Festival Speed Hill Climb in the regular FXXK, and it was an unbelievable experience. This car now has a bigger wing at the back and even more aero. If we continue down through and find our way through this crowd, we get to the lineup of the current production range from Ferrari. We've got the GTC4 Lasso T with the turbocharged V8. We've got the new Portofino, the 812 Superfast. Beyond that, the Pista and the LaFerrari Aperta. But we'll get down there in a second. On the other side, if we come through again through the crowd here, we get to the new Vantage in the lime, the launch color. Very, very, very bold. Next to that, we have the Vulcan AMR, the Vulcan AMR Pro, which, which is Vulcan AMR, which is, well, quite frankly, it's like the FXXK, right? Absolutely crazy thing. Uh, sounds insane with the V12. Just looks like nothing else out there ever. Ginormous wing, that aggressive splitter down at the front. But beyond that is quite an interesting car, the Vantage V12 V600. So this is a very limited product developed by Aston Martin Q. There are seven coupes and seven roadsters. The coupe is about a million pounds. The roadster is about 1.2 million pounds. Bespoke carbon fiber body. It's effectively a GT12 in a new skin with a manual gearbox. It's the ultimate V advantage really isn't it where they started with the v8s they grew up installed the v12 now we've got this unbelievable anyway moving back to the other side to check out the 488 pista the pista pilotti we have right here with the livery available only 
to drivers in the Ferrari Challenge Series. There's a video coming with this car, um, but this is the focused hardcore version of Ferrari's 488 GTB uh, Limited Series. Lots of carbon fiber on this one that we see fully loaded spec. Beyond that, Ferrari's hypercar, the LaFerrari Aperta. Just over 200 of them built in total. This was the launch color scheme specification for it. The open top version of their hybrid hypercar with 963 horsepower. Definitely no shortage there at all from the 6.3 litre V12 supported by hybrid assistance. So if we come back through towards the other side, a couple of Lexuses down there we'll get to in a second. On this side, we have the car from Dubai, W Motors Veneer Supersport. Awesome to see this making its dynamic debut, driving in public here. Uh, crazy Crazy, crazy creation. They have a showroom over in Dubai that I've visited before actually and seen the car. But we'll hopefully see more of this again in due course. Take it all in, study what it's all about. Radical design and styling, as you can see around the back. If I come back down this way towards the Lexuses, we have one of my favorite cars ever, Lexus LFA with 5 litre V10, naturally aspirated the screams away in the most tremendous ways. And then the newer LC500, LC500 Sport Plus, if they make an LCF, more hardcore version of this with 600 odd horsepower or so, that will be an awesome, awesome thing. Coming to the other side, Lotus are back with the Evora GT430, a more hardcore version. Lotus are releasing a lot of different models, but this is well, the Evora with a ginormous wing, splitter, more power, winning combination if you ask me. Spinning around to head up this side, we have the Ford GT, the other car that I recently announced, of course, that will be arriving at the tail end of this year, something I'm really quite excited about. I recently launched my specification, but with the 3.5 litre EcoBoost V6 twin turbocharged, making just over 650 horsepower and one, in my mind, of the absolute prettiest supercars on the road at the moment. To continue up through the crowds here, we get towards the Koenigseggs, where we have two to have a look at. The Koenigsegg Agera RSN here, one of the 25 Koenigsegg Agera RSs, a car that is being driven and used properly. This car has done thousands of miles and it's only a few weeks old. Massive congrats to the owner. It's got the engine from the Koenigsegg one to one. Next to that, we have the Agera Final Edition, one of two of the very last Koenigsegg Agera's. Radical, radical styling. This is the Agera uh, FE4. One is called Thor, one is called Vader. The carbon fiber bodywork in the dual tone gray at the top of it with the pinstripes running down towards that wing with the shark fin in the middle at the back too. Continuing through, a bit of a crowd here around the Honda NSX. Enjoyed a drive of one of those around Estoril not all that long ago. Hybrid setup, very clever and trick technology going on. Um, in the way that it runs. Then we get to the BMW i8 Roadster, which I drove recently uh, on the press launch. We saw more of that. Continuing beyond, we've got the BAC Mono, popular single seat race car, ultimate track experience in a car that can wear a number plate. That is a road legal drive. Come around to the other side. We start with the Rolls-Royce Dawn Black Badge. Dawn on steroids, think of it that way. We've driven one of those out in Dubai. Um, basically with the styling, they've darkened lots of the chrome elements, sharpened up the handling and suspension side of things, and made it more, slightly more of a driving experience, as well as the luxury of a Rolls-Royce. Then we get to the Maseratis, where we've got the Grand Cabrio Sport convertible and the Gran Turismo MC, one of the best sounding V8s you could ever imagine. Before we get to another car with a stunning V8, the Ford Shelby Mustang Super Snake 5 litre, V8 in the Mustang roars and rumbles. This is actually the line of good sounding cars. This is the Jaguar F-Type SVR, launched I think in previous year, maybe here. 575 horsepower now, as the name suggests. And then the new Bentley Continental GT. Luxury, technology, comfortable car to drive. Very nice. So, continuing around, back towards the Mercs, where we have Mercedes AMG GTR. The car, of course, that I announced I was getting two years ago here, but in the Green Hell Magno, the launch specification. All the power running to the back. Awesome, fun car to drive. On this side, the AMG S63 Cabriolet with the new Panamericana front grille. Luxury meets style meets drive. That on the French Riviera would be awesome. Let's come around to the Lamborghinis. Everybody's favorite, I think. At an event like this, five Lamborghinis in this part of the paddock. We start off with the Huracan Performante, track version of the Huracan, 5.2 V10. Then we get to the Aventador S Roadster. We have the open top and closed top versions of both the Aventador S and the Huracan Performante. But this is the big one here, the Lamborghini Centenario Roadster, one of just 20 of their open top hypercars. 
770 horsepower from the 6.5 litre V12. They made 20 coupes, 20 roadsters. We get to see one of them here in the paddock. The side we've got the new Performante Spider. They've only recently released this car. Open top experience with the V10. Couldn't really ask for more. And then we have a very nice colour on this Aventador S Coupe. Viola purple. Looking awesome. It's a historical colour they've reintroduced on that car. So if we come back, this is not the end by any means. The run of cars continues and continues. Here we have some pretty interesting stuff actually to start off with. I think we'll get to that side in a moment. Let's come over here. We have the Pagani Zonda Barchetta, the HP Barchetta, one of the final three Zondas wearing the HP naming designation, Horatio Pagani himself, with the low cut front windscreen. It's completely open, no roof, launched last year, but literally only three of these in the world to be made. The final celebration and tribute of the Zonda. Next to that, the Pagani Huayra Roadster. Had a few iterations now of the Huayra. Of course, it was launched with the Gullwing Doors. Then they made the BC, the more hardcore version. And most recently introduced the topless car, the Roadster. It's new carbon buttresses behind, still retaining the active flaps on the very back. Porsche, got two track slayers, the GT2 RS, the uh, production car Nürburgring record holder. Stunning, stunning time that it's achieved there. Finished in the yellow, looking very, very cool. And then on this side, the GT3 RS as well, the new GT3 RS, the big daddy to the GT3 that I ordered last year here, or announced here at Goodwood. Finished in the uh, racing livery scheme akin to that of the uh, Nürburgring race cars. Next to that, though, is the 911 Speedster. Let's see if we can come have a look at this. The 911 Speedster concept. I'm just going to scroll this through for a moment so you can see this. Introduced quite recently as effectively an open top version of the 911 GT3. Think of it like that um, with the 4 litre engine. The wider uh, stance sitting very low, actually. The form here. Look at the mirrors. That's a very nice touch. And the fuel filler cap and the bonnet. I'm not sure you could necessarily do that now on a production car, but needless to say, those are going to be a very, very high demand. It's going to be a very high demand to get your hands on one of those. So if we spin back round to the other side, on the main stand here at the moment, just walk past the Brabham, we'll come back to that in a second, is the 911 reimagined by Singer. And this thing, believe me when I tell you now, is exceptionally loud. Big, big following for these. People absolutely love them spinning around on the stand here. Come back around to the Brabham BT62, driven by David Brabham here. The reintroduction of Sir Jack Brabham's uh, name on a race car. Track only, costs around a million pounds, just over 700 horsepower, but under a thousand kilos. Proper car to drive out on the racetrack and finished in the livery here, representing one of their older uh, race car successes. Looking very, very nice too. Continuing on, we've got the Atal Design uh, Zero Uno Duerta, the open top version of the Zero Uno. So the Zero Uno is based on the Volkswagen Group shared platform with the V10, um, but in this case, now Duerta being open. And they made five of the Zero Uno Coupes, and five of the Roadsters are being introduced. And we come beyond where we have a very interesting car. This is the Atal Design GTR 50, which they're now saying that if they get enough demand, they're going to put into production and build 50 of them for £800,000, based on a Nismo GTR, as you can see, with completely new styling from the coach builder. The colour scheme is awesome. Look at the tail lights on the back of that, how they're floating on that strut above, and open through the bottom too, with the wing that fits flush down into the body work. Come and have a quick look around. Updated the interior, just introduced the flash of colour everywhere too, and sharpened the looks. But this was a surprise that nobody really expected was actually going to be launched. Um, it looks just like a concept in photos. Here it is, presented right here. Then we get to one of the internet favourites, the Apollo IE, the Intensa Emozioni with a whopping 6.3 litre V12, pushing out nearly 800 horsepower, and just so much of a unique design. It's almost just amazing that they managed to make this. And we've seen it in film that they've been traveling around the world with the car, finished in the purple carbon with the gold wheels on it too. Looks truly, truly stunning. Doors that open upwards. Just come around and see what the front of this car actually looks like here. How about that? Sheer savagery. Is this a future classic? It's just so radical in the design. Awesome, awesome to see it. Let's see if we can get a peek into the interior as well, coming around towards the other side. Just to uh, see this for a second. Squeeze around through here. Obviously lots of people doing the same. Fixed seats into the shell. Screen. There is. Wonderful. Look what else has made an appearance. The new Rolls-Royce Cullinan, their luxurious SUV. Recently
recently revealed and also taking part in the supercar run with the noise of all of the cars going off here before the first supercar run of the day. Now this part of the paddock that I'm walking to is called First Glance where we can take a look at a few more cars but believe me it's busy here. We get started though right in the first spot with the BMW M850i. Yet to have a driving one but the brand new sports luxury coupe from them. We've also got BMW's M performance parts concept based on the M2 wearing an awful lot of parts including a very noisy exhaust system. Beyond that we have two Mustangs, the new Ford Mustang Bullet and the original one from the movie Bullet's Mustang that's also driving up the hill. Very special thing. I didn't realize what it was at first but then worked it out later on. This car, another Mustang, actually is autonomous and is driving itself up the hill climb. This car is doing everything via satellite and automatic control. It looks like it might actually be about to do that in a second. They're just setting it up to, to do some bits and bobs, so maybe we'll see that. Coming up this way, we've got some SUVs, the Lamborghini Urus that I test drove not too long ago. Lamborghini's first, or modern first entry into the SUV market after the LM002. On the other side, we've got the Maserati Levante, another Italian SUV, Lotus, with the Exige 430 Cup, latest version of the popular Exige sports car. On the other side, we have Bentley's Bentayga Pikes Peak car, the car they took over to Pikes Peak in the US to run. This is quite interesting. This is an Aston Martin Signet. You might not have thought you'd see another one of these back here, but inside is the 4.7 litre naturally aspirated V8 from the V8 Vantage inside a little Signet. Who ever thought that that was going to happen? Bucket seats, cage, stripped out. That's the kind of Signet that I think they uh, were getting requests from everybody to do back at the time. But here it is, it's arrived. Those are actually the wheels from the original V8 Vantage as well. Didn't expect to see that, very nice. Then we've got the Rapide AMR, so the limited series version of the Aston Martin Rapide S, finished with the uh, halo scheme with the sterling green and lime accents all around it, the carbon fiber at the front. We've got Alpine as well with the A110. Of course, this has been a hugely acclaimed car that arrived on the scene, uh, tribute back to the original Alpine under the Renault umbrella. And we've also got the A110 GT4, GT4 series race version of the car, wearing much the same body, but with additional aero, large wing at the back and the splitter at the front. On the other side, just to not skip past them, we've got the Porsche Cayenne Turbo, we've got the Porsche 718 Cayman GTS, and we've also got the Polestar 1 prototype car, the new hybrid uh, from Volvo under the Polestar brand that is it making its dynamic debut here too. We come up this way, there is a ginormous Rolls-Royce stand where the Cullinan is right in the centre, as you can see spinning around. Actually, there are multiple Cullinans, as well as the Dawn and Wraith and the like. But let's come around to this side where we have the Toyota A90 wrapped up in its camo. This is basically the new Supra. If we can get through just to have a look at this, skip past it so you can see a bit of that. It changed a little bit from what we've seen of the concept. It's actually kind of interesting to see how it differs. It's less sharp in the design. The nose is slightly less pronounced, but that will be fully unveiled and things like the camo over the headlights taken off uh, in the not too distant future. If we spin around, come back this way, we have the Jaguars starting with the XD SV Project 8 limited series 200 mile per hour saloon car. Absolutely ridiculous. 5 litre supercharged V8 in that, making lots of power. A car that must be so much fun to drive. The new F-Pace SVR, another SUV, a lot of SUVs over in this side. We've got two cars from Lexus, RCF 10th anniversary. Also on this side, the UX small SUV. Then we've got the Defender, works V8. Nice V8 in a Land Rover Defender. Although, for me, this is one I particularly like. The Mercedes AMG G63. Total surprise when I drove it recently. And this is Mystic Blue, which is a really nice color. I would honestly really like one of those. Absolutely love it. So much better dynamically than the previous generation of the G63. Vast improvement. And lastly, at the end of the line here, we have the new AMG GT four-door 63S and top spec version of the uh, new look four door extra seats AMG GT of course uh, similar in many ways to my GTR but now this is the first edition as well by the way with the wing on the back now with extra doors more space wonderful road trip car no doubt venturing outside we have a flurry of singers including their brand new DLS the design and lightweight study 
developed in partnership with Williams Advanced Engineering. It's a reimagined and restored Porsche 964 from Singer, but picture this as the ultimate air-cooled 911. 500 horsepower from a four-liter flat six, completely in every possible way redeveloped. And if I just come up the side here quickly, you can see the intakes for the cooling that go through to the engine that have been introduced there, the increase in size of the rear ducktail, but just look at it, new lights, new everything, new magnesium wheels developed by BBS. The car has more torsional stability than a Porsche 918 Spider, And that's the engine at the back there. A very special car that has just launched and been revealed right here. This though, the McLaren F1, is the granddaddy, certainly for my generation, a legend in every possible way. And maybe next year, we'll even see McLaren's new three-seater, the BP23 as it's codenamed. Maybe it'll be the year after arriving in the supercar paddock here at Goodwood. But lovely to see that out on the lawn, surrounded by plenty of other very nice cars. This is a huge event. There are so many things going on, but the supercar paddock is always, for me, one of the very best places to start, just because of the sheer dense concentration of the latest and greatest. Like I said, an encyclopedia of supercars, just about everything you can imagine, all there in one place. So do tell me, what's your favorite? Let me know down below, below what is the favorite car that you've seen in this video, this crazy, crazy car park that is the Goodwood Festival at Speed 2018. We're not completely finished. I might have told a lie. There is one more car that has just arrived in the supercar paddock, currently driving towards me. Should we take a look at the Koenigsegg Regera? I think one of the very first customer cars that has just been delivered in green carbon fiber here now in the supercar paddock. I remember going out with Christian von Koenigsegg in the Regera when it had just been launched to experience it in the snow of Sweden. That car now lining up with the Koenigseggs in their ranks here. again in electric mode it is a hybrid after all with nearly 2,000 horsepower or so when working together but a decent chunk almost half of that just in electric mode isn't this wow just something truly special Anyway, night is effectively falling here at the supercar paddock, but thank you very much again for joining. I will catch up with you guys very soon. Cheers!